Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the first Children's Services Scrutiny Committee for Municipal Year 2020-21. Uh, first item is a declaration of interest. Anybody else? Declaration of interest to me? None. Item two is urgent business. I'm not aware of any. Move on to item three. Apologies for absence. Chair, I've got apologies from Councillor Dean and Councillor Radcliffe deputising, Councillor Ishmael, Councillor McMulkins deputising, and Justine Bond. Thank you, Vicky. Item four is minutes of previous meeting. Can members move this as a correct record? Aye. Blue Thor's chair. Aye. 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 Thank you. Item five, children's response to COVID-19. It's a presentation and I'll hand you over to Director of People, Bernie Brown. Good evening, members. Um, we thought it'd be useful in this session to offer you a summary of um, some of the challenges of, of COVID um, and some of the kind of future challenges as we move through into the autumn. Uh, so we've done a series of slides uh, which talk about the education response, the social care response um, and the finance response. Um, in relation to budget pressures and, and where our financial position is. I also then engaged with the chair because normally at this time of year we would um, sit down together in a room and we would have a dialogue about a uh, future scrutiny programme. Uh, what I've done on the last slide um, is, is put some proposals for your consideration just to um, hopefully um, provide a, a, some suggestions for consideration for the next, um, the, the forthcoming scrutiny during the course of the next year. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I would like to thank you all for your support of all of us as officers during the incredibly challenging COVID period um, and hope that, that what follows, it gives you a, a helpful overview um, of what we have achieved and, and some of the, the challenges that, that have presented along the way. So I'm going to hand over first to Paul Rankin to summarise education. It will then be followed by uh, Ian Walker and then Lisa Butcher in terms of the finance and then it will come back to me at the end to look at the um, options for uh, further scrutiny um, and, and the chair and, and members can have their, their contribution. So over to Paul Rankin. Thank you. Thanks, Bernie. Uh, if you can just move on to the next slide. On the presentation. Thank you. So um, just summarising uh, the position from schools in early years, um, I guess, first of all, um, there was a lot in the media around schools being closed dur during the lockdown period. Um, near enough, all the schools in Bolton were open uh, all, all during this period uh, for vulnerable children and children of key workers. Um, teachers and head teachers were working throughout the lockdown to ensure that uh, the most, most vulnerable in society were protected and that those staff uh, that were working on the front line of the COVID response uh, had childcare for their, their children and they could continue to work uh, on the critical wards and in, in those critical uh, positions uh, to support the response in Bolton. Um, very quickly, when when COVID hit, uh, we realised that our our support arrangements for schools and our communication arrangements with schools doesn't really fit for a, a response that requires um, an instant sort of reaction and instant information for us to get things out to schools and for them to respond. Um, so we set up um, a, a cluster coordination arrangement. Um, so we've got 10 clusters of, of primary schools, we're near enough 100 primary schools uh, and they were set, um, they were uh, allocated, each each cluster was allocated a, an officer and special schools were allocated an officer as were secondary schools. 
uh, and uh, basically we um, we use those officers to to deal with any queries that were happening on an almost hourly by hourly uh, basis during uh, parts of the lockdown. And we were having daily meetings with head teachers to understand what the response meant um, and uh, what the impact of this was. Um, that that continued for for some time um, from the 1st of June schools started to invite more children back um, uh, more children started to come back from primary schools from uh, reception year one and year six and by the end of term we had near enough all schools had um, some combination of, of, of those year groups back um, all the schools completed uh, detailed risk assessments um, that our health and safety team produced a, a pack to, to assist them with, uh, which gave them a template to work with, but also gave them some feedback on those risk assessments uh, uh, about what to include uh, and what else needs to go in. Um, all the risk assessments again were shared with um, trade unions and through a consultation process. So there was an amazing amount of work done in a very short period of time uh, through a lot of the support teams within the local authority and also an incredible work done by um, teachers and head teachers to ensure that things moved quickly that uh, children came back into school when they could uh, and and also uh, during that lockdown period to ensure the most vulnerable uh, needs were met so um, I guess the early years position is is quite similar. Um, again, there's there's so many childcare providers and early years providers that, that were open uh, during the lockdown period. Um, there, were, there was around about, I think, 50 to 60 percent open during that time. And that has increased uh, since more guidance has come out and, and more settings have, have continued to open the doors and, and invite um, children back in. I think the early years uh, position is, is very challenging at the moment in terms of um, the pressures on, on some of the uh, providers there, but we're working with providers to provide uh, advice and guidance and support where we can. Um, over the lockdown period, we had round about 100 requests uh, for key worker places. So this is where we had um, the uh, children of key workers who, who couldn't access their normal provision for whatever reason. So uh, the teams within the local authority worked with schools and early years providers to ensure that a place was there uh, for those for those children. And one one of the good things about um, uh, the lockdown and the COVID uh, response has been how we've embraced some some of the digital technology and how we've moved to new ways of supporting schools and early years providers. So as as with um, working through um, this session now, we're, we're doing it through um, Microsoft Teams. We've run a number of sessions with both schools and early years providers uh, to assist them with guidance, to provide them updated uh, information on the public health position to help them inform their risk assessments uh, and um, we'll be continuing to use some of this technology going forwards now because it's, it's really going to help us uh, uh, in terms of efficiency. Um, moving on to the summer programme and, and where things up to, are up to there, um, the Youth Council's Youth and Play Service would ordinarily run, run quite a, uh, an extensive um, summer programme of act activities um, over the summer holiday period for uh, children and young people. Um, due, to, due to the um, timing of, of guidance that has been released around this, it's been very difficult to stand this up quickly, but the provision has stood up from today and we are starting to run some of the uh, summer activities within the council. Uh, the guidance only came out on, on the 1st of June. Um, so um, we would normally run um, uh, uh, a recruitment exercise to bring in temporary staff to assist with that but unfortunately we've not been able to do that so we're, we're working with our in, a, within our existing resources to put on on those provisions so um, provision will run as, as normal through our, our big um, centres according to the Covid guidance and uh, such as Castle Hill and Haywood and we will also be doing some of the detached outreach activity in, in some parks and estates uh, around Bolton and we've been coordinating our, our discussions with other youth providers in, in Bolton to make sure that we're, we're not duplicating effort. Uh, so Lads and Girls Club and, and the Wanderers Community Trust. So there's, there's a lot of work happening in a very short space of time around that. 
and all our attention now is starting to focus on uh, planning for September in terms of what this means following the most recent guidance out for schools, for early years providers and for out of school settings and wraparound care and 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 what that's going to mean for the people of Bolton. So we're now starting to work on this in detail over the next few weeks and we'll be engaging with earliest providers and, and head teachers over the summer period to ensure that we're, we're set up for September. So uh, that's the end of my section. So I'll hand over to Ian Walker now who will go through the uh, children's social care parts. Good evening, uh, councillors uh, and chair. Um, so I'm just going to, to relay the, the impact on, on the stay and safe service, child services that we experienced lockdown and COVID-19. So we could just move on to the next slide, please. Can I have the next slide at all, please? Ah, there we go. So, um, as anticipated, um, the contact and referral rates to uh, our referral and assessment teams, uh, what's commonly known as the front door, experienced uh, an immediate dip from partner agencies post lockdown. Um, however, since then, there have been incremental week on week increases um, so that we are now broadly up to where we were uh, pre COVID. Um, However, um, the the significant factor considered for the future is that our referrals. Can we just go back to one one slide, please? Our referrals from schools um, remain only at 25% of where they were uh, pre-COVID. So obviously, come September, if our current referral and contact rates remain at the current rate, uh, plus the additional 75% of referrals from schools. We do anticipate there being some significant pressures on the service um, come autumn. Um, the uh, recurrent factors um, that exist within those referrals are primarily to substance misuse, alcohol, mental health, uh, domestic abuse, but also degenerating poor home conditions. Um, and um, it's the hypothesis that especially the home conditions are a direct result of uh, the lack of social work oversight through uh, across the threshold home visits, but also the, the lack of availability of the support agencies in, it, in terms of uh, supporting people where their substance and alcohol misuse and mental health is also a significant factor on impacting on, on families within Bolton. Further to that, the complexity of referrals uh, to a high number of strategies where uh, a family should be referred for uh, an initial child, prote child protection case conference. Um, and, and I think the, the complexity of the referrals has certainly been exacerbated by the, the environmental factors uh, and, and the, the context of, of, of lockdown. So next slide, please. So, um, uh, the, the the plans to address the pressures that we're facing. Um, the first stage of that will be the launch of the early help offer. Um, people may be aware that we've been developing the early help offer for, for some time now, uh, but we now have a structure in place. Uh, and the early help offer will have four high level measures, um, initially to reduce the child in need cases and the child protection cases, uh, and also to reduce the, the numbers of looked after children. Um, but, but ultimately, uh, there will be an objective to increase the number of early health assessments and the associated plans to respond to need earlier and therefore to um, more early uh, to, to provide more early identification of, of families in need on a system wide basis and thus improve our ability to respond uh, in a more timely manner uh, and to prevent more families from from traveling down that social care pathway from referral to child and need to child protection to pre proceedings to care proceedings to look after children. So the whole concept of the early help offer is to intervene at, a, at an earlier point and to divert families from that, that, that social care pathway. Um, the early help offer will also support increased capacity for step down cases 
uh, and, and hopefully contribute to an associated reduction in re-referral rates, but also in the number of cases held by social workers. Um, the early help delivery model and early help access point should also impact on reducing inappropriate referrals to social care and therefore reduce the no further action rate that we currently experience. Next slide, please. Um, as you can see from, from the statistics, there, there has been not just a, an increased demand at the front door, but, but across the whole system. Um, so children subject of child in need plans have increased by 10% and children subject to child protection plans has increased by 20%. And um, we've done a, a deeper dive audit of, of the reason, the underlying, underlying reasons for the increase in child protection plans and, and identified uh, five key factors. Um, obviously, without that, uh, with, with less direct intervention from social workers, it had an impact on, on many of the key components of the child protection plan not being completed in full. Um, professional concerns also increased uh, due to lockdown. Um, the direct work not being completed, but also the lack of um, or limited uh, support uh, um, work and, and support from the support agencies, including parents in courses, media, mediation, uh, inner strength programmes, but also as I referred to earlier on, the drugs and alcohol agencies. And then finally, the, the final issue um, was clearly some degree of professional anxiety because children were, were less visible to the agencies and therefore those agencies felt less confident in, in signing up to a, a deep planning of those children and a move to a child in need. Um, one positive piece of um, data was that despite the, the, the lockdown scenario, uh, Bolton has managed a, a slight reduction in the total number of looked after children. Um, and that seems to be um, working somewhat against the trend across the GM region. Many uh, local authorities in the northwest have reported an increase in after numbers, but Bolton has, has managed to, to at least hold consistently. So in respect of demand management, um, we'll be looking to implement the early help offer in autumn. We, we are looking to the phased and safe reintroduction of threshold crossing home visits to undertake more direct work with, with families to support more children away from child protection plans. Uh, we're looking to dedicate a team to focus on completing the outstanding ta tasks in, in child protection plans on a real targeted basis to enable us to safely reduce the number of those plans. And probably those plans who are actually closest to completion just to push them over the line. We are implementing a full demand management strategy to support us to safely reduce the numbers of looked after children. Um, and we are looking to introduce step down plans to reduce the numbers of our looked after children who are placed in out of authority placements and to bring them closer to home. Is the next, yeah. Uh, and, and that's the completion of mine. So I'll hand you over to Lisa. It's actually Bernie that's uh, delivering this now. Um, Lisa's not with us. Um, so this is the children's final outturn position from a financial point of view. All of this information, members, you've previously seen, it's in the public domain. Um, and unfortunately, it, it doesn't show um, a, a positive picture. We are uh, projecting a, a significant overspend in, in both the uh, final position for children's social care and then in, in, the, in the education that, that follows. Um, they're, they're there um, for your information, but, but show significant pressures um, across the sector. And as Ian's already alluded to, uh, much of our, our, our deficit pressure and our overspend comes from uh, placement pressure. Uh, there is a demand management strategy um, that, that, is, that is being produced and, and worked upon to focus upon bring, returning children into Bolton from out of authority expensive placements and reducing the amount of money we spend um, on uh, placements for children. The whole early help strategy is underpinned um, by retaining children um, in Bolton and at home safely um, and, and not utilising the option of, of care for children unless it's absolutely critical and necessary to their safety and ongoing welfare. Where they do come into care, obviously it's also focusing on returning them home. 
and you 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 are all i think collectively because of your collective experience aware of the significant pressures um of children's transport particularly in this in in uh, the um special needs transport that that places a, a a pressure on us um but but we have um projected overspends that that are extensive and if we can just flick on to the to the final slide in terms of the budgets um again that shows um pressure in the dedicated school grant and and that is particularly linked into the high needs block um for children with complex and additional needs uh, and again that that is reduced that is linked to the volume of children um, who, who are assessed as having additional and complex needs um, and the placements that they require, um, many of which are out of authority and, um, and um, high cost. Um, so um, it, it is a, a fairly sobering uh, financial position that we find ourselves in. But I, I wouldn't want you to um, think that we weren't working hard to address that. I would also add that that is a feature of pretty much every local authority budget across the country at this point in time. Um, and, and our efforts to focus on early help um, will, will assist us in mitigating some of those pressures going forward. So if we can move on to the, to the next slide, please. Um, and this is my um, very early attempt to suggest a programme for 2020-21 for scrutiny. So there's four elements to this because we have four, four um, scrutiny um, meetings. The first was around our inspection programme to, to appraise you of the position that we're in. We are due inspections across the board really in relation to children's social care and, and youth justice and uh, a reinspection on our special educational needs. So it was just to um, talk you through the key elements of, of the judgments and the expectations of, of those um, those regimes and where we where we all almost where we self assess self assess ourselves at this current uh, current moment in time. Um, and that would include some some more detail behind the demand management strategy that I alluded to before in terms of the financial pressures, suggesting then that, that we would have one on school results, academic attainments, but also the gap between our looks after children population and mainstream uh, children um, and, and focusing and scrutinising um, those two particular areas. Um, and then uh, a further session on uh, special educational needs. It's um, it, it, it provides us with significant demand um, and this significant attention nationally in terms of the inspection framework and the multi-agency nature of that. So that would include that particular um, area would include um, involving colleagues from CCG um, and the uh, Foundation Trust in terms of uh, the, the broader expectations around SEND. And then early help and demand management would include colleagues from Public Health who manage the 0 to 19 contract, um, as well as the broader approach to multi-agency early help in Bol Bolton and, and the emerging picture that we're seeing through the, the partnerships. And they were the four areas that, that I thought would give us a fairly broad look at, at a range of services and give you the opportunity to to scrutinise and challenge the work of, of us as officers to ensure that we are focusing on delivering the best uh, for all children in Bolton. And I'll pause there and hand back um, to Councillor Iqbal as the chair. Thank you, Bernie. If I can bring in uh, Vicky at this point. Thank you, Chair. It was just to say on the work programme, um, obviously in previous years we've done workshop sessions and we've asked members to tell us what areas they'd like us to look at. What we're proposing this year is that if any members have got any particular areas they want the scrutiny committee to look at for the next new year, if they email it to me and what we will do, the chair and vice chair will sit down with the director and assistant directors, look at what members are suggesting and also try and fit in some of the areas that um, we didn't unfortunately manage to do last year because we had two meetings of Children's Services Scrutiny Committee 
cancelled and they will be featured into the four broad headlines that Bernie's outlined, if that's okay. Councillor Donaghy, you wanted to come in? Yeah, thank you, Chair. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, to Paul, first of all, uh, he indicated in his presentation that the planning was underway for the uh, September term and for getting pupils back into school. Uh, significant numbers of parents have contacted me and said they have no confidence whatsoever in any system in getting children back into school at this moment in time. And a significant number will not will not be returning their children in September, even under the penalty of fines. So my question is, will we be doing some sort of survey to find out if parents have faith in the veracity of our argument that we have a plan in place that can work and is sustainable for getting these kids safely back to school. If I can move on to, uh, I think it was Ian, on referral rates, Ian, you mentioned that there was uh, only a 25% referral rate at uh, of the previous levels. And I think you further went on to say that the demand need had increased by 10% on children's plans and on children's protection by 20%. And officers had ex expressed quite rightly uh, a significant amount of professional anxiety uh, regarding uh, children not being referred. Are, are we confident that no children have fallen through the net? Are we confident that we've done everything in our power to protect the children in our borough and make sure that they didn't fall through the net? Um, can I go on then to another point you made? Out of uh, authority placements, and obviously this is linked to the budget, um, and you're going to bring uh, children closer to home, which is absolutely great news. How many children at the moment do we have out of borough? And how much is that costing us? And then on the budget, finally, um, sorry, uh, the budget. Um, am I right in assuming that the financial outturn on the first element of children's services is 7.179 uh, million? in the red and then on schools itself were five just over five million pounds in the red which is an extremely concerning situation of 12 million pounds adrift even at this time in the year and bearing in mind the effect that covid is having on the uh, an increasing budgetary pressure on the council which was already under pressure because of austerity how do we propose to address these uh, th this uh, significant uh, negative impact on our budget? And finally, on the on the work programme, could I just say that um, children um, um, at the moment who may not go back to school, can we have a, a standing item on the agenda regarding COVID? Can we be told how many people are on home schooling programmes? And if they are, will they be using the laptops that the government provided? And more importantly, have we got enough laptops to cover them? Thank you, Chair. Bernie, do you want to come in? Thank you, Councillor Donaghy. Uh, I'll try and work my way through. You might have to prompt me if my memory fails me uh, in terms of the range of uh, questions that you've just summarised there. Um, in relation to the budget, you are right um, that in, in essence there's 12 million um, adrift, but it shouldn't come as a surprise to members of this scrutiny panel because it, the figures are not dissimilar to previous years. There have been significant pressures. This is the highest for social care, but in terms of DSG and, and links to um, the school's overspend, that has always been significant. The social care um, 
deficit has increased year on year, um, but but has always been significant. Um, in in certainly in the in the time um, in the time that I've been in Bolton. So you you are you you are um, right in relation to those figures, and they are indeed. I share your concern about the, how worrying they are. Um, in relation to um, social care, have we missed any children? Um, I, I would hope that we have made the best efforts as a multi-agency partnership to identify and uh, care for and and assess the needs of the most vulnerable. I think that as we would all accept in dealing with a pandemic, people have lived more and more behind closed doors. So, so <clears throat> excuse me, I have no doubt that there will be some children who, who haven't come to anybody's attention um, for a whole range of reasons. Um, that is not the fault of either social care, the police or other partners that are engaged in proactive work in, in safeguarding uh, vulnerable children. Um, we, I think that staff have made the best efforts where we've become aware to assess uh, and safeguard uh, children. And, and I think the demand and the increase in the demand speaks to that. Um, However, there are all, always children um, who who agencies miss and, and who the community miss. And that's why it's always been critical that we engage with our communities and we often rely on uh, intelligence from ward members um, and, and colleagues about what's going on in, in communities. I think when schools return, and I was only talking about this to colleagues at Fort Alice and, and Bolton Lads and Girls this afternoon, that we will start to see um, a, 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 a significant um, increase in the number of children who, who talk about experiences that they've had and that they will need support from a wide range of agencies, not necessarily social care, but the voluntary sector. Schools themselves are, are key in, in providing strong pastoral support and indeed many of many of the schools have reached out to families um, at, at this time, um, as well as, as um, colleagues in, in the voluntary sector. Um, in relation to the uh, return to school for children, um, there are extensive plans in place with all of our primary and secondary schools. I think head teachers and, and indeed our early year settings, head teachers have put a lot of effort into uh, securing and supporting and encouraging the return to school for, for children uh, and, and supporting the anxiety of parents. I think there will, there will be families and children who are worried and concerned about how safe it is to return. And I think that that is particularly true and, and understood by our head teacher colleagues in the special sector, where children have got complex health conditions, um, who have many, many of whom have been shielding throughout this crisis. And I think that, that work has gone on to encourage children to, to return. Um, we, we are, public health uh, colleagues are engaged in a um, a, a comms campaign um, to encourage and support people um, who, who are returning into both workplace settings but also in, in community settings um, and we'll see more and more engagement. There is there is um, comms on the um, Bolton Council website and all of the schools have kind of engaged with their, with their school groups and their school year groups to encourage children to return We've got additional briefing sessions in the summer holidays with head teachers about the impending return, and we will monitor really closely what is happening as the schools return in terms of the numbers and the children missing. I think it's fair to say that we are expecting there to be some um, school refusers and that we're going to have to think very carefully as a system of strategies um, to, to encourage those children and their families back into education and learning. And that is something that we will collectively um, kind of walk through. This is kind of new for, for, for everybody, but I think that we have done a lot of talking, a lot of thinking, a lot of reflecting and a lot of planning for that event. Um, we know that we've got large numbers of children that are not, that don't have access to, to digital um, tools that, that you described. Um, the, the government did fund uh, a number of those for uh, year 10 learners. I think that we are aware uh, as well that there are a number of year six children that have accessed um, digital devices that they will take with them into year seven, into their secondary provision. Um, and we will look at 
um, the gaps for those children and see what options we have to mitigate those that, that will include a dialogue with the DfE um, around devices, but also it's not just devices, it's access to, to uh, the internet um, and, and some families um, don't have that. So um, we, we will be exploring those offers and that's why a lot of the secondary schools were keen to have access to children prior to the schools finishing and have sent learning packs out that are non-digital learning packs um, for children. And I think that the autumn term will be about assessing and evaluating that those children who've really missed out, those children that haven't engaged in any education, as well as supporting the, the stronger children, the children that have been able to access um, the, the work going, going forward. Um, I'm going to defer one of your questions, which was around um, out of borough placements to Ian, but um, have I covered all of the other elements, Councillor Dunahy? Uh, do you think? Yes, thanks, Bernie, um, for that very comprehensive reply. Uh, just a comment, and I don't expect you to comment on it, um, but I, I have nothing but praise for you and your team and for the head teachers in Bolton, both in secondary and primary schools, who have done their level best to cope with this uh, dreadful situation. But I deplore utterly the government's lack of direction during the early stages of this process. And a lot of the onus was placed directly on the shoulders of the head teachers, both in primary and secondary. 10 out of 10 for what they've done in your team, but the government absolutely abrogated their responsibilities at the very initial stages of this dreadful uh, pandemic, in my opinion. But thank you, Bernie. Thank you, Councillor Donaghy. If I can just come in then, uh, in respect of the, the unanswered queries, um, first of all, of course, um, the In, in assisting us to maintain contact with with their pupils um, and, and that has included a, a number of, of home visits for for who they see to be the most vulnerable children uh, and that's given us some degree of confidence that that no children are slipping through the net we've also used every available uh, facility to keep in touch with our children our, our most vulnerable children um, social workers have done remote visits they have done virtual visits they've done doorstep visits They've met young people in, in the community. The authority placements, there are currently 59 of our young people placed out of borough. Um, but um, 17 of those 16 and 17 year olds, and um, people may or may or not be aware, but I, I'm very new to both. So, and I only started uh, at the very start of March and the third with, with the Bolton offer it is the, the range um, of um, supported accommodation for, uh, for, for care leavers and, and young people about to leave care. Um, so it's 17 year olds. We need to be making supporting them through a gradual transition back to living in Bolton and to living on a gradually increasingly uh, independent basis. So I'm confident that we can because of the, the support and the partnership working within Bolton and um, the strong partnership arrangements with Bolton at home and a range of providers confident that we can safely bring um, a significant proportion of those young people back uh, to, to living at home in their hometown uh, before they reach adulthood. Thank you. If I can bring uh, Vicky in at this point. Sorry, Chair, I was just going to say, I know there was uh, the internet signal wasn't great then and Ian was going in and out. So if I could suggest to members that if we, if Ian does an email just with the answer that he provided and then you are definitely aware of the facts and figures.
Uh, thank you, VK. If I can bring uh, Councillor Brady in at this point. Thank you, Chair. I'm just waiting for it to go red. Thank you. Um, th this is just a, qu a quick question. I've had inquiries from a number of parents now whose children are due to start school in reception, obviously at primary school. Are the joining arrangements for individual schools? Are, are they an individual decision or is, is because there seems to be quite a marked difference between individual schools? Is, is this to be expected? Sorry. Yes, sorry, I was waiting for it to go red then. Sorry for the delay. Um, yes, because the um, so the, the the in terms of the return to school and some of the plans, they, they're dependent on the mm. environment of the school and some schools have got larger areas and, and different capacities. So there will be some difference. We are trying to have a reasonably consistent offer and we're not supporting schools to close earlier or close on certain days, but but some schools are doing that um, because they feel it is the only way that they can manage their staffing needs, particularly and the teachers access to um, planning and preparation time. Um, so we are engaged in the dialogue with heads to try and have a consistent offer. But as you can appreciate with 100, 100 primary and 20 mm -hmm. secondary, you are going to get some uh, variation. Mm -hmm. I think, could I just come back? Could I just come back, please? Yeah. Yes, you will come in, uh, Councillor Brady. Thank you. What One of the areas that, that has concerned me is I've had a number of parents contact me about one particular school, and this is the reception class who've never been to school before, and they're being offered one session in the first week lasting 50 minutes. D does that seem, is, is, is that happening in other schools or is it just a peculiar thing for this school? I think the most um, useful way of answering that, Councillor Brady, is if you email me about that particular yeah. school okay. and I can respond to it directly rather than dealing with it here, if, yeah. that, if that's helpful. OK, thank you, I will do. And thank you very much. You're welcome. Next, I have Councillor Haslop. Councillor Haslop, you, you want to come in? Just waiting for the red box. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I want to go back to uh, what Councillor Donaghy was saying, uh, specifically this seven and five million. Now, I'm assuming that this is last fi these are last fi uh, financial years figures, the seven and a half of it, seven and five million. Uh, a couple of points in relation to that, or questions in relation to that. Are they reflective of national trends, these seven and five, or regional trends? And specifically, the, the five million, will we be getting this back from the DFE um, through the DSG? Um, and as, as in relation to the seven million, I'm very concerned where this seven million is going to come from. Uh, it's a shortfall, as it, have reserves been called on, or uh, how are we going to fund this seven million pound shortfall? Uh, the second part is relates to um, the work programme and um, particularly my ward covers um, a portion of Farnworth and as we're all well aware the looked after children rates in Farnworth are very high and I'm not so sure whether this is a, an innate issue or whether they're actually exported to Farnworth and I think it's something that we need to look on at the work on the work program that you were taught you talked Bernie about bringing children back into the borough um, but are we bringing them back into Farnworth or as I say are the problems innate are they just are they unique to Farnworth okay thank you So um, in relation to the looked after number number figures, um, I'd, I'd have to look at um, look at them. Um, I think that some of the issues around looked after children that are living in Farmworth may relate to placements and may relate to foster carers who live there. 
um, if you're talking about children who've been placed in care and that there's a higher number, I'm 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 not personally aware that we've got a particular issue with Farmworth in terms of um, volumes, but um, it's a question that we can take out and respond to you um, privately, if that's OK. Uh, I mean, I'm happy to share it with scrutiny committee, but um, I, I unless Ian has the detail, it's quite it's quite difficult to have that level of detail um, in, in an event like this. Ian. Yeah, this is, I will I will investigate further, but then um, my immediate thoughts so this may relate to private children's homes setting up in the Bolton area um, and, and then bring in uh, looked after children from other local authorities into that provision because we certainly don't have a, a significant higher proportion of children in the Farmworth area than any of the other wards, to my knowledge. Sorry, Bernie. It's OK, no worries. Um, so um, in relation to the finances, um, they are an, an ongoing pressure. And I did I did say earlier and uh, that, that they are it is a national issue. This is not an issue about Bolton. We haven't suddenly kind of being profligate with with resources um, and and or, or or not being paying attention to the ma the management of the budget. We've been paying very close attention to the management of the budget um, and um, it, this is about demand um, and the increase in demand. And for those of you that have sat on scrutiny um, for for a number of years, you'll know that our looked after number looked after children numbers have increased year on year um, and um, that is something that is a national um, a national issue and a national pressure um, and indeed the um, send figures the special educational need figures and the number of children um, that are accessing specialist educational provision and specialist residential education provision has also increased and the DSG is not uh, the, the deficit DSG is not refundable or or um, they, we, we don't um, we, we won't see our, our, our balances um, kind of kind of um, paid for by the DFE, although there is some discussion, but it has been going on for quite a while around the pressure of the high needs block. And that is those those discussions are taking place nationally around uh, the requirement and, and the ask of central government for increased resources um, to to offset the pressures on the SEND budgets. And one of those pressures, uh, which is which is currently being um, very robustly debated, is the pressure on special needs transport and, and the increased cost in relation to that. So there are a wide range of um, pressures um, and it is becoming increasingly hard to to balance off the end of year deficits with reserves because reserves are very slowly but surely, as you're all aware, decreasing um, and, and reserves have been used year on year um, to to either um, offset um, budget pressures or to divert the need to make more more widespread cuts. And so we're very limited in terms of our access to ongoing reserves. And I think that um, end of year end April 2021 will be a real challenge uh, in terms of um, our our uh, our budget position and our our future proofing given the demand that we're currently facing. So um, I, I think members are right, and I, and I think that there is kind of cross party interest in in those pressures, and we will obviously keep you appraised. Of, of, as I said, the demand man management strategy, which we had proposed to put on the first um, scrutiny um, programme um, to look at our, our strategies to mitigate some of those financial pressures.
thank you, Bernie. Next, I have Councillor Murray. Um, Councillor Murray, if you want to come in. Oh, thanks, John. Um, Madeline, sorry, you just look like you're on mute. It's junk then. Sorry. Thanks, John. Um, thank you for the comprehensive answers to a lot of the questions I, I actually had down. So I've only got two, unfortunately, now, uh, which I'm sure you'd be glad about. Um, one is, will there be any help for schools when um, children do go back in September? And I'm not talking about PPE and stuff like that, but um, how they've coped with um, being in lockdown themselves and not not being in school um, and maybe the mental health stuff. And the second one is um, that that was the last one I had was uh, with our providers because they've had lesser uh, children and babies going in because of lockdown and shielding and stuff like that. Um, are any of the businesses um, still up and running and healthy because I know some of our um, elderly persons homes have, have struggled a lot. Thanks a lot for that. If I can answer the the, um, the question regarding help for schools um, we have for the past couple of months been working with colleagues in health and the CCG to develop uh, an emotional health and trauma pathway um, for when pupils return to schools. So what we have is a range of uh, providers, both uh, within social care, health and the third sector who are lined up to offer varying types of support to, to the schools and to pupils when they return to school post lockdown. So for example, we have um, a very clear bereavement counselling pathway for children who may have lost um, grandparents uh, and not been able to, to say farewell properly through, through attending funerals. Um, we have a, a pathway for children who may have witnessed uh, domestic abuse in the family home during lockdown. So we have a range, a full range of, of emotional support mechanisms in place um, from a range of services and partners lined up to step in as and when the schools return and that pathway has been shared with the schools and across social care uh, and health partners, GP surgeries, health visitors, so that people will know how best and how more, how most rapidly to access the most appropriate levels of support for those children. Um, thanks, John. Um, if um, Councillor Murray, um, in relation to the providers, I, I, I don't think that many providers have had less children going in. Certainly the children's sector market is sadly buoyant um, and um, I don't think that, that um, there will be many children's homes providers who will be forced into kind of any form of administration as a result of this. Um, I think that the foster care sector has been under huge pressure because some fostering families have been shielding, as you quite rightly suggest, and that has meant that there have been limited options for children. Um, and we're working on a Greater Manchester sufficiency campaign for fostering, um, which we hope will, will start to um, have an impact into 2021. Um, so um, we we will be able to report back on that um, as that as that um, emerges and grows in in success. So I hope that answers your question. You're mute, Councillor Murray. Oh God, it's this. Am I on now? God. Yeah. Thanks, John. It's a good job John's there. Uh, it's those old days that can't deal with these things. Um, I just have to thank you again for for really, um, well, they make me feel better now because I've been worrying all the time about uh, children marauding around the streets and God knows what. So thank you again for that. 
um, very comprehensive um, reply. Thanks. Can I just say thank you as well to the to the staff under very difficult circumstances um, that we are very proud of you all. Thanks. Thank you. OK, next we have Councillor Walsh. Uh, Councillor Walsh, if you want to come in. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, can I just say, first of all, I think we should put on record uh, uh, sincere thanks to all the staff, not just the presentation tonight, but for the work they've done over the last uh, few months and difficult and uh, um, I'm not going to use the word unprecedented, but but uh, new and trying circumstances. But I think uh, what we ought to concentrate on the scrutiny committee is uh, to review uh, the uh, settling down period uh, as we start to move into the new academic year in, in September. Uh, clearly there are going to be budgetary issues uh, and I suspect that that's going to be very much a moving feast over the next uh, few weeks and months as national and local discussions take place with departments and with, with government. But I think as a scrutiny committee, we really need to be looking at the long term issues and the uh, indicative uh, list that was put up by uh, the director at the beginning, I think gives us a fairly sound base from which to build uh, some scrutiny of important issues to ensure that we continue with the services in the right manner, appropriate to the new uh, regime that, that we, we face uh, from September onwards. So I'd be happy to uh, support the principles of those uh, points uh, set out by the director. I think we ought to the scrutiny committee to look at how we, as an authority, we can have control, are controlling the budgets, controlling the policies, controlling the uh, work that is done across departments in relation to all the children's services to ensure that uh, we are maintain the highest level standards uh, into the future. And I hope that that will be the base on which we might uh, formulate a scrutiny committee agenda for the next few meetings. OK, thanks, John. Uh, as Mrs. Rich said earlier on, we'll take this on board and we'll discuss it and come back to you. Does anybody else want to come in? If not, then can I thank everybody for attendance and for your contribution? Uh, if you can make note of the next uh, children's services. Excuse me, sorry, I've just um, I've just typed in speak. Mm -hmm. It's um, uh, Councillor Galloway. Okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll take you, Councillor Galloway. Come in. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to um, say something about um, the opening of schools in reply to um, Councillor Donahue's comment. Um, I think um, I don't know whether he was referring to the local situation or nationally, um, talking about that the, the government had um, vacated a space. Um, I, there had been there certainly wasn't a lack of um, government guidance going out to schools. Um, I think the issue was there was far too much. Um, there was huge amounts of, um, there were dozens and dozens of documents going out to schools, um, giving guidance on um, how to um, approach the pandemic. Um, I don't know whether um, the issue was related specifically to the opening of schools in June um, and um, I know our local approach did um, differ from the local authorities um, that um, surrounded us in that we did not give um, um, a blanket um, refusal for um, schools not to open. And, um, you know, with the officers, um, our administration did decide um, that it would be best to give the decision um, to the school because they knew the layout of their school, they knew the staffing issues. We thought it, um, if they could open, that would be great um, because 
it's the balance of risks at the moment and the fact that there are children out there that have not had any schooling um, for six months is very concerning and if a school felt confident enough um, as a, a local authority we felt that um, they should be allowed to open and to offer um, to increase their offer to, to um, different year groups. Um, so that was why um, our local authority did um, um, have this particular policy. I just wanted to say that. Okay, thank you, Councillor Galloway. Uh, with that, like I was saying, the next meeting of uh, Children's Scrutiny Committee is on 26th of August. So members can make note of that date in their diary. Uh, with that, uh, I close the meeting. Thank you.